Hello. This video is on hypothesis testing. It will explain the procedure of a hypothesis test and introduce you to the terms and the symbols. You see in the syllabus it mentions the null and alternative hypotheses. It talks about significance levels and p-values and it mentions expected and observed frequencies degrees of freedom and critical value and all these things will be explained in the video so a hypothesis is a statement about the unknown parameters or the variables of a data set. For example, a manufacturer might claim that his new product is effective for longer than six hours. So that's a hypothesis. Or that regular exercise in adults is gender dependent. So that's another hypothesis. So the aim of a hypothesis test is to find out whether the data collected supports the hypothesis. So as I said, the purpose of this video is to introduce you to the procedure involved in performing a hypothesis test. In later videos, we will actually perform hypothesis tests, but as I said, in this video, I'm just going to introduce you to the, the steps or the procedure and to introduce you to all the terms and all the symbols. So there are six basic steps to a, a hypothesis test. In the first step, we state the null and the alternative hypotheses and there's notated as H0 and H1. In the second step, we will calculate the expected frequencies based on the null hypothesis being true. The observed frequencies, well, they will be given in the question, in the form of a table. In the third step, we choose our significance level and this basically then sets a cutoff value called the critical value and using that critical value we can make a decision as to whether to accept the null hypothesis or whether to accept the alternative hypothesis and we will also state the number of degrees of freedom and I'll explain that to you shortly the calculation of the uh, test statistic and the p-value will be done on a calculator. In step 5, we state the acceptance and the rejection criteria. And we use a critical value to make the decision. And the critical value, which will be given in the question, is of course determined by the level of significance that was chosen. In step six, we draw a conclusion about the null hypothesis. And we do that by either using the test statistic or the p-value. So the initial hypothesis is called the null hypothesis. And it's denoted or written, as I said, as H0. The null hypothesis is the default position assumed to be true unless there is significant evidence against it. Every null hypothesis has an alternative hypothesis that will be accepted if the null hypothesis H0 is rejected. The alternative hypothesis is written or notated as H1. The significance level in a hypothesis test is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it's true, 
For example, a significance level of 0 0.05 indicates a 5% risk of concluding that there is a difference when in fact there is actually no difference between the observed and expected values. So the significance level basically determines a threshold for making a decision. As I said, it gives us the critical value. Usually expressed as a percentage, typical levels of significance would be 1, 5 and 10 percent. So if you're testing a hypothesis about the safety of a braking system in cars, you would obviously want the risk of making a wrong conclusion low. So you would test at say 1 percent. Whereas if you're testing whether students use the school bus or not, you may be content with a 10% risk. So you would test at the 10% level. The number of degrees of freedom is broadly defined as the number of observation or pieces of information that are free to vary in the data sample. For example, if you have five observed frequencies in a data sample uh, and their sum of those frequencies are 100, then when you're calculating the expected frequencies, four of those frequencies can vary, but the fifth one is such that the sum of those frequencies has to also equal 100. So there are four degrees of freedom in that example. The number of degrees of freedom is denoted with the symbol nu or df. So the test statistic measures how close or far the observed data frequencies are from those that you would have expected if the null hypothesis were true. And as I said, we will use our calculator to calculate the test statistic and the corresponding p-value. That test statistic will be compared to the critical value. Obviously, the smaller the value of the test statistic, that means the closer the observed frequencies are to the expected frequencies under the null hypothesis and hence the more likely that the null hypothesis will be accepted. So onto the p-value or the probability value. This tells you how likely it is that your observed data set could have occurred under the null hypothesis. For example, if you have a p-value of 0 0.08 it means that assuming the null hypothesis to be true 8% of the time, you would obtain a test statistic at least as extreme as the one that you found, the one that you've got. So a small p-value indicates that the observed sample would have been very unlikely based on the null hypothesis being true. So we'll be tempted to reject the null hypothesis. Whereas a large a larger p-value indicates that the observed sample is consistent with the null hypothesis, so there will be no reason to reject the null hypothesis. And the critical value, again, this is the value that we use to determine whether to accept or reject the null hypothesis. And that value, the critical value, depends on the significance level and the number of degrees of freedom. So on to step five, acceptance and rejection criteria. There are two ways that we can draw a conclusion in a, a hypothesis test. We either compare the p-value to the significance level. And if the p-value is less than the significance level, then there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Alternatively, we can compare the test statistic to the critical value, if we're given the critical value in the question. And if the test statistic is greater than the critical value, then again, there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. And now on to the final step, step six, either accepting or rejecting. So in summary, if the test statistic is greater than the critical value, or if the p-value is less than the significance level, then there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis.